Hi, my name is Maeve. I am uh, the chair of Manchester's First Crash Economic Society. Um, I am a second year economics student. Um, so Tom asked me to come here and he gave me four questions that I could um, that I might want to talk about, so I've just done that. Um, the first one was about what we've done at Manchester and the second one is what we see the role of students in curriculum reform to be. Um, third one is some comments on the core curriculum. I was at the, um, at the event in November, so we as a society have, have produced some feedback on that. And um, lastly, the role of activism in economics, which I thought was quite an exciting question. Um, okay, so firstly, I'm just going to discuss like, a little bit about what we've done in Manchester um, and the things that we're proud of and what our successes have been. Um, rather than our failures, because this is more exciting. Um, so the first thing that we're really proud of is the way that our society is structured. We've got three um, branches, and I think they all work very well together, but first and foremost, we are a campaign society. Um, uh, we have yeah the campaign branch, and we have an events branch, which is events like this, where we promote discussion and broaden our audience and involve other people in the debate. Um, and then we have an education branch, where we teach ourselves uh, the economics that we're not getting taught um, in our degrees. Um, so... We have produced the thing that we're proudest of, or the thing that I'm proudest of, I didn't actually write it, but I put some bits in, um, is we've produced a report on Manchester Economics Department. And I think it's um, a really important thing to do because we've looked at the way the undergraduate um, syllabus is structured. Um, we've offered some reasons why we, we don't think that it's good enough. Um, we've offered some reasons why we think this status quo has, has come to pass. Um, we've looked at some of the constraints, and there's very real constraints on universities um, and in their teaching um, syllabuses and then we've offered some, some ways that we feel that they could overcome these constraints um, and we've presented it to the department and we've had some excellent feedback. I would like to say as well we have a really good relationship with our economics department and I think that this does have to be a collaborative effort um, and we definitely should be t a team rather than um, adversaries um, which I think sometimes in the media and some people discussing us, some people coming into contact with us, assume that we're adversaries, we're not, we're all trying to improve economics together. Um, so yeah, and they have listened to us and they've, they've um, introduced several changes that will come into place in September um, because of our input, or at least partly because of our input, which is uh, really exciting. And because we're a campaign society, we started lobbying from the start, so we've been meeting our economics department from day dot. Um, so we're aware, we're aware of the allies in our department um, and of people that are on our side. We're also sort of aware of the people that aren't on our side, but they tend to stay away from us rather than telling us off. Anywho, um, so um, also as part of our campaign, the campaigning that we do, we've had um, quite a lot of national press coverage. And I think the thing that we're, that we're really pleased with about this is it's inspired universities across the country to start up similar societies. Now, Better Economics existed before we existed, before we existed, um, but there's other um, other societies across the countries that have, have started up off the back of this um, stuff, and it does have to be a national movement. I mean, Manchester could adopt an amazing syllabus tomorrow, and it wouldn't really make the change that we're that we're wanting to see. Um, yeah, um, and then the events section in the self education section we run um, a, an alternative economic syllabus not syllabus lecture series called what you won't learn in an economics degree which is like introductory um, lectures on different schools of economic thought and um, which has been really successful and we've also had several panel debates and discussions with really um, important economists that have come to Manchester and talked about that and sort of broadened the question to to wider society um, which has been mint um, okay so that's that's a brief summary of what we've been doing in Manchester and what a sort of campaigning society looks like with this. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the role of students in curriculum reform. Um, and one of the first questions we got asked when we started up was, um, and when we started talking to our department, is what gives you the right as, as students who've been studying this for a couple of months to tell me, <coughs> who, is, who is an academic who's been studying this for decades, um, what I should be teaching you? Um, and I think it's a, really, it's a really good question, and it's one that deserves quite a lot of thought. Um, but I think there are several reasons why we as students do have a right to make demands on, on our academics. And none of these, I really want to say none of these, is because we're paying nine grand a year. I think that's a really, really flimsy argument. We could just demand really easy exams, and then nobody would gain, but we'd, get, we'd all get first. So it's nothing to do with that. Um, I think we can bring different perspectives on... on 
into the syllabus. Um, and because exactly because we haven't been just studying this stuff for decades, we're a lot more open to change. We're a lot more open-minded. We, um, we, I do, well, I certainly do, and lots of economic students also study different disciplines in their undergraduate degree. And they can bring the lessons from like, political philosophy, for example, is one of my favourite things that I do. And um, it's, there's lots of things that I do in my political philosophy course. I think that we could bring more of these sorts of things into an economics course. And I think that I have a right to make a comment on those sorts of things. Um, another reason why I think that we um, have a lot to offer as students is that um, the economic context from which we've sort of formed and developed our economic ideas is completely different. I mean, we saw on Wendy's graph with them, um, there, there was a really long stable period on the instability graph. I mean, a lot of our academics have um, studied economics and mastered economics during that period where, where we, we were, it was, economics was pretty impressive. Economics seemed to have the answers. Economics was like cooking on gas and doing really, really well. <coughs> and then all of a sudden this massive crash happened and this is, this is the world that we've been brought up in. This is the world that we see. And we are so dissatisfied as a, as a society, I think, with economics in a, in, a, in a lot more fundamental way than the people that were learning economics during that period, the, the smooth period, um, have. So I think that we have different perspectives that we can bring in it um, because of that as well. And the most fundamental reason I think that we have every right to challenge our professors is because we are future economists and we are going to shape the economies of the future and we're going to shape our society in the future and we're going to live in that society. And so I think that we have every right to challenge it. And I'll expand on that a bit. Um, so the way that neoclassical economics has been taught, certainly to me at Manchester, and I have reason to believe um, on a much wider level, um, it's presented to us as this value neutral science um, and it is not a value neutral science it's a value laden theory of how people behave and there's a lot of things that we can learn from it and it's very useful in a lot of ways but it's not science and these are not universal truths about human behaviour um, so the sort of methodology that I've been taught is um, individual agents uh, optimising either profit or utility in perfectly competitive markets um, and working towards equilibrium um, and there, is, there are lots of values in this, in this methodology. So it values some things over other. So uh, the individual over the collective, um, optimization of an individual's utility over the promotion of social good, and uh, competition over cooperation. And that's not to say that these things, cooperation, social good, and things can't be included in neoclassical economics, and that they are included in neoclassical <laughs> economics, but they are secondary um, in, in the methodolo methodological, very difficult word, methodological uh, framework. Um, and this is not the only way to model society. Um, and if we want to live in a society that values different things or values more things, such as equality of opportunity or, or the sustainability, environmental sustainability, then we need to reflect this in our economics education. And by, by teaching alternative theories that are, and their methodologies are built on a different value structure. And I think that's, that's incredibly important if we want to yeah, produce a different society. Um, and our opinions on these things have got nothing to do with the in-depth um, applying things or learning loads of maths. Our opinions on these things are equally as valid as anyone that's been studying economics for one million years. So um, the next thing that Tom asked me to speak about was uh, some of our um, views on the core curriculum, which is an incredibly <laughs> intimidating thing to do. Um, so yeah, we, I would really like to preface this with, I've only looked at the pilot material. I went to um, a, a discussion about this in November. Um, and I'm just going to offer a few things that we think about that. Um, first and foremost, I think it's absolutely amazing that th this, this problem with economics has been recognised and that people are doing stuff about it. And I think it's, it's um, a really exciting project. Um, also, the, 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 the focus on data and real world application of economic ideas is exactly the sort of thing that we're championing. But as you can uh, probably predict, uh, there is no, we, we, we're not happy with the fact that there is no um, alternative schools of thought. Um, and this means to us that the, the mainstream neoclassical economics is left uncontested and its weaknesses left unchallenged. And this is the fundamental core of economics education to include um, yeah, different theories with different value structures and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, um, so uh, like a, an example of this, and as I, as I say, we've only looked at uh, the pilot material, but it does talk about the Great Recession. 
Um, and we thought in this maybe you could compare a monetarist and a, a Keynesian view of the Great Depression and then comment on how these, these apply to what's going on today. Um, you could even talk about a Marxist or an Austrian view on this, if only just to say why these theories are wrong, um, or why the, you think they're wrong and this, this theory champions over them. Um, and I think the sort of, this sort of approach opens up questions and debates and leads to a much more well-rounded um, view of why these things happen. Um, it does, there is a lot of real-world issues um, that it tackles, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, but for example, they do an explanation that we've read about, this explanation of the financial crisis, and it does seem just like a bit of a doctor version of the standard ISLM model, um, and the financial crisis is represented by a shift in the IS curve. Um, and we felt that this doesn't really explain why it happened. This doesn't explain why boom led to bust, um, how it might have been prevented, why it wasn't prevented. Mm -hmm. um, and in the material that we've seen, and it seems like from what you're saying, this is, this is not the case in, in the, the curriculum as a whole, but yeah, there wasn't uh, much acknowledgement of the role of policies and institutions and complex human behaviour. But as I say, just, we've only just seen this very small snippet. Um, and we, yeah, we would like a large range of explanations so that we can form a well-considered opinion on this sort of stuff. Um, it does give a nod to history, which I think is, is really fantastic, but because it doesn't include alternative schools of thought, it doesn't, the history of economic thought doesn't seem to be there. There is, there is a view of history, but there's not, it doesn't start with Smith and move up. Or to an, I think it's quite one-sided, and it doesn't really introduce um, room for interpretation or room to critique in, in the stuff that we've, we've looked at. Okay, and then the last question, which was the question that I was really excited about, was uh, the role of activism in economics. And I think it's a bit of a silly question because it's not the role of activism within economics, it's the role of activism full stop. And I think activism is just so important. Um, it shapes and reshapes social norms. It can be as large as a sweeping movement, or as large as, it, like, we're trying to build a movement here, and it's quite a large activist thing, or it can be as small as just talking to people in the pub about ideas, or noticing that your local community centre doesn't have um, wheelchair access and trying to make change in, in a small way. Um, and I think it's the only way that society progresses. Um, I see, think that activism, if we see something that we don't like, then we should question it. We should, we should constantly be asking why, and we should try and understand why something is like that. And if we're still not happy with it, once we've understood why it's like that, then we should speak out about it and we should try and change it. And our opinions, all of our opinions on this stuff is, is really valid, I believe. Um, I believe this is the way that society progresses, uh, by looking at things that aren't working and figuring out ways to make them work. Um, and I think without activism, we would never change social norms. So I wouldn't be able to vote. Um, it, life would be a lot more hard in England for people, with, uh, people of ethnic minorities or people with disabilities. Um, activism has made the world a lot more just and welcoming in place, so I would encourage you all to be activists in whatever small, like, small way you can be, and it is activism that makes our world a better place. Thank you. <laughs>